Let us pray. Loving and faithful God, as your word is read and proclaimed, quiet within us any voice but your own. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our second scripture reading is a continuation of uh, Luke chapter 1. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Indeed, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his child Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, the third Sunday in Advent, is known as Gaudet Sunday, from the Latin word meaning to rejoice. And so we lit the candle of joy this morning, reminding ourselves that as a community of faith, we watch and wait for the coming of the Lord with joy. I can see the joy in some of your faces this morning. As I shared with the children, we pointed out some of the signs of joy around us. Some of you are beaming with joy. You have been celebrating over the course of the fall the weddings of children. Some of you have done the good and the wonderful work of celebrating safe and healthy deliveries of children and grandchildren. I look out and I see a number of family systems delighting that their freshman college students have returned home for an extended Christmas break. There is much that you are giving thanks for. There is much that you are joyful over. But for others of us, feeling joy is hard today. I acknowledge that. Some have arrived to worship today and perhaps are feeling disappointed. Disappointed with God, even. It's hard to be disappointed with God, particularly at this time of the year when the whole world seems to be telling you to feel otherwise. But the reality is that all is not calm and all is not bright in this world. This evening we'll be gathering outside at the stable at 6 o'clock for the longest night service to pray for and to remember those who are experiencing homelessness and for those for whom they have died on the streets here in Hillsborough County over this past year. Then at 640 in the chapel, there will be a Vesper service of remembrance where people who are grieving are invited to gather and to pray for and to light candles for those that they are missing in the very core of their being this Christmas season. If feeling joy is hard for you today, know that you are not alone. You are not alone. Mary, an unwed, pregnant Jewish woman, Jewish girl, knows something of difficult and trying circumstances. How is it that Mary is able to rejoice in such trying times? 
Author and theologian C.S. Lewis, reflecting on joy, once wrote, Joy will never fail us. Joy resides within and undergirds us regardless of what is happening on the outside. It is the free gift of God that comes with Jesus Christ. The love of God represented in the person and the work of Jesus the Christ is our joy. And that is unchanging and unending. The witness, the scriptural witness that Mary provides for us today is to break forth in song praising God and giving voice to the promised reality of God's vision for the world. Her song articulates the revolution, the turning around that is going to happen as a part of God's plan with the child that she carries within her. The proud will be scattered, the powerful brought down for their thrones, the lowly will be lifted up, the hungry filled. All of this, according to the promises made to Abraham and to his descendants forever. As Christians today, our call is to bear witness to the continued work of the risen Christ in our world. As Paul states in the letter to the Thessalonians, rejoice in the Lord always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. Today, as we draw ever closer to the manger, it's appropriate for this preacher to take her cue from the gospel writer Luke and to use less prose, allowing for music, to carry us into the hearing and the interpreting of God's word. It may seem like a small and an insignificant act, gathering together and singing, especially when there is war and hunger and disease in the world. We should remember that God, whom Mary gives voice to, delights in taking what the world sees as a small and insignificant act and doing extraordinary and unexpected things. Things like what the prophet Isaiah speaks of, giving sight to the blind, unstopping the ears of the deaf, the lame leaping like deer, and a song of joy on the tongue of the speechless. For when we gather together and sing to God the hope and consolation of the world, we, like Mary, are swept into God's divine activity to save and redeem the world. May the song of Mary remind us that the joy of Christmas is all about trusting God's promise to redeem creation. So with spirits rejoicing, we sing about what is, we sing about what was, and we sing about what is yet to be. Let us pray. As a church around the world continues the Advent journey towards Christmas, enable us, O oh God, to be good stewards of the Christmas message of joy, justice, and redemption. May our worship, acts of service, and community life bear witness to the light that came into the world and set it on end through the person of Jesus the Christ. We are mindful, O oh God, of our particular freedom to gather openly as your people and so we pray for Christians around the world suffering persecution because of their belief in you or who are living in the midst of war or oppression. Give to your church faithful prophets and messengers who will strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees and say to those who are of a feel fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. God of joy and exultation, you strengthen what is weak. You enrich the poor and give hope to those who live in fear. Look upon our needs this day 
Make us grateful for the good news of salvation and keep us faithful in your service until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen.